What is up, guys? It's the Sound Alchemist, and I'm here with Gersh One. And today we're back in black as we're doing yet another episode of For the Greater. <laughs> this is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewers. If you have a question for us, comment down below. Put question in front of your question because we get to those questions first. first. That is what Revenant Six 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 did. He says. Slanesh was created by the Eldar and is the youngest of the four Chaos Gods. Is there a lore on the creation of the other three, and which one do you think is the oldest? Also, if Gilliman has no wang, then how does he bang Yvrain? So, first, let's talk about the Chaos Gods. <laughs> yeah, and we'll get to the juiciness later. Yeah, so, um, I think the oldest I've read in the 5th edition codex um, is Korn, mm -hmm. because I think Korn is the embodiment of one of the most primitive or primal emotions, which is rage yeah. and blood and, and, and skulls. And I mean, you kind of need those things before you uh, start a civilization. But you kind of do need like amoebas and microbes and like toxins and diseases mm -hmm. to spawn life. Yeah. Um, but the codex says yeah, it was cool. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how they chose that. And I don't even know if that's canon or if that's just like... It got retconned later or something. Yeah, because a lot of that lore comes from uh, Warhammer Fantasy. And Warhammer Fantasy or Old World isn't even a thing anymore. Mm -hmm. Wasn't Old World supposed to come back? Yeah, it, I think COVID, Nurgle had another play mm. to it. like Because we haven't heard anything in a while about it. Um, from the very... Like, I, from my memory of reading that codex, I think his birth happened when, like, two brothers killed themselves, or killed... Each the, other. Yeah. Or, yeah. Well, yeah. one of them survived, <laughs> the other one's dead. But it was, um, it's like, um... Cain and Abel type yeah, thing. That Going thing. back to, like, religion and stuff. But it was humans. Right. Uh, which is interesting. Because, mm -hmm. uh, like, obviously, humanity shouldn't birth a god like that. Obviously, there are other races billions of years before humans why would that create a god yeah and and like i said it's it's old world um lore, lore. that probably didn't uh, transfer over all that great mm -hmm. uh, because the birth of uh, nurgle is actually the the black plague yep the bubonic plague um which again it doesn't really add up yeah when there are literal viruses that could kill an entire world's population why this one yeah yeah um, and then Zinch, I don't think there's ever been an origin story that I have picked up on. Yeah, when it comes to Zinch, it's like very convoluted. Um, but I, anything that has to do with creation and birthing of like the chaos gods, to me, it's like, why are you going to give them a starting point when there's no time in the warp? Like time doesn't flow naturally or the way we perceive it. Um, because you could go into the warp and come out in the past, come out in the future, come out at the same time that you're going into the warp. Yeah. Like, relativity and time are concepts that do not affect these beings. The chaos gods always existed, but then they have a birth. Like, how does that make sense? Yep. Um, I think it would be really cool to say that, like, some of the chaos gods ha are, were created during the war in heaven. Mm -hmm. But obviously, that's there is no lore that says that. Right. To me, I think I would like it better if instead of the chaos gods being birthed by like the bubonic plague and that thing, it was like a notable like uh, bloodletter or bloodthirster. Like a demon was created because of these acts instead of the actual gods. Oh yeah, I get you. Yeah. So like, was was that one Nurgle dude, Scabiathrax or whatever his name is? Uh -huh. Like maybe he was birthed because of the bubonic plague or something like that. Yeah, that would be more badass. Mm -hmm. Um, it adds more fluff to the actual demon. Right. That's that's perfect for homebrewing, too. If you're homebrewing your own, like, greater demon, try to connect him to an actual world, world event that happens, like, in today's day and age. Yeah. Um, um, like, we've got those two Slanashi uh, demons that came out for Age of Sigmar. Mm -hmm. They're essentially siblings. I think that's how they called it. So, um, maybe... Something. Something, yeah. <laughs> uh, those models look cool. I yeah. really like them. It sucks that, obviously, it's for Age of Sigmar, so we don't know for sure if they're going to get their own rules for 40k. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because we, we don't have a demon codex yet, so. Right. I mean, you could always play them as, like, a keeper of secrets, but, again, you're missing out on, like, certain special rules and stuff. Right, yeah. 
And then for your second or the second part of your question, uh, let's talk a little bit about the female orgasm. Um, <laughs> so you, you were saying, how is um, Gilliman supposed to screw Ivrain? Um, there's this concept where it's like this, here like this. So two in the, and then one in the, mm -hmm. and that still works. Um, I, I don't know too much about, I do know a lot about Eldar anatomy, um, <laughs> but I don't know what it looks like under there. Um, but I'm guessing that's what he did mm -hmm. since he doesn't have a wang. Right. And actually, I don't think the Primarchs are the same as Space Marines where like, I, I'm pretty sure they still have one. Yeah. Cause I mean, Space Marines don't need them. But Primarchs, I mean, they had families, they had lives. Yeah. Even though, what, like, the purpose of your wang is to pee, right? And to procreate. Mm -hmm. But, like, if the procreation thing is not going to happen... You still got to pee. You still got to pee, yeah. So, Unless you sweat it out. Which the Space Marines are known to do. Or, like, <laughs> they process their food so well that they don't have to, like, mm -hmm. defecate. Um, <laughs> so I don't, I don't really know. That's mm -hmm. something that GW needs to like come out with an FAQ and be like, all right, yeah. Space Marines and Primarchs did have wings, and this is how they did it. Mm -hmm. Kind of like in fifth grade where they gave us a pamphlet that just made everybody more confused than educated. That's true. But it, but you looked at the boobs and stuff, which is <laughs> pretty cool. Um, another thing, too, like within our bodies, we have certain organs that we don't use. One of them is like, what is it called? The little thing that dangles off of your... <laughs> the appendix? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have vestigial structures. And it gets smaller. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing with space marines, they still have wings. They're just really, really small. Until they break off. Exactly. Uh, well, well, yeah. No, because the, the ones that we have inside of our bodies are not... Not the wings inside of our bodies, <laughs> but like... The, <laughs> yeah. The vestigialness. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Dolphins are cool. Whales, too, because if you look at a whale's fin, it was like a hand, so you, you still see, like, tiny fingers. Yep. Yeah, and they feel love, mm -hmm. uh, dolphins and, and humans. There's a story of, like, some researcher who took uh, acid, I think it was, uh -huh. to uh, try to communicate with dolphins and obviously gave the dolphins acid, too, and then they went in a relationship, or they got into a relationship. I think they had, they have a cartoon mm -hmm. based on that. And I'm pretty sure I'm lying about most of that. <laughs> so I just realized that I have there's an outlet, an electrical outlet down there. Mm -hmm. And I have a fork sticking right out of it. <laughs> yeah. It missed the actual outlet, but like this much. No. That's a fire hazard. That is. Um, the AdMeg would approve. Yes. <laughs> Next question. Oh, uh, This one's kind of on the same topic. All Might says... Do most 40k creatures reproduce only to continue their species, or do they also just do the do for fun, like humans and dolphins? I'm pretty sure the Eldars, uh, the Eldars, <laughs> the Eldar do it for fun. Oh, definitely. I mean, that's how they created Slanesh. Yep. And then orcs do not. Humans obviously do. Um, you have the Tau. I'm guessing they do it for fun, right? They would have to. I mean, it's not just all work, 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 but it is for the greater good. So then in the, in like the greater good society or in Tau society, the red light district would be what cast, do you think? Would it be the water cast? Because they're like diplomacy kind of like. Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking. Convincing you to buy safe moon. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's just all the cast together. Yeah, that would be nice. Mm -hmm. All like the reject ethereals that are having to <laughs> dance for money. Yeah. And then you could even have like some of their auxiliaries there, like some crew, some Vespid. That is weird. Like when we finally discover that there's life on other planets and like I wonder if we're gonna think that they're sexy. Yeah. Probably. I mean, anything that comes out, people always find a way to make it sexy. Oh yeah, but I'm I'm not talking about like personifying a dog to make him look good. <laughs> I mean, like, to actually actually look at a sentient being. Oh, like squids, right? Mm -hmm. Or, like, yeah, like a squid. Let's say we find out that squids, there's a species of squids that is as intelligent as, like, primitive humans, let's just say. Mm -hmm. I would not find that squid attractive. And society, I'm guessing, would also not find that squid attractive. So would the Tao Empire find the crude attractive... Maybe Just not because... at first, but once they got to actually know the person and connect on a deep spiritual level, then... But you can't do that on the strip <laughs> club, right? No, there's not enough time. 
unless you're a regular and then eventually you're like you know what no dancing today can you just hear me out yeah you talk mm -hmm. that's how you fall in love with the stripper and then it's gonna hurt when you pee mm -hmm. i'm asty pain i'm in love with a stripper was that like his like breakout song no i think it was before that he had a lot of songs back in the uh middle school era <laughs> Next question. Uh, this one is by the Wap A Wet. How do the Necrons re recogger their losses? The build new Necrons. Oh, how do the Necrons recover their losses? Do they build new Necrons? That's a good question. So they have reserves depending on the size of the dynasty and the world. Yeah, the tomb, tomb planet, tomb world. Yeah, so there's three classifications. The main the main one, the one that's going to have the most warriors is going to be is it Crone? I believe so. I don't even know. I don't remember the names, but like so the main one is obviously going to have way more uh bodies. Mm -hmm. And when a Necron dies, his programming, I guess, or what is it called? Yeah, I guess you could call it that. Goes back into the tomb world and then another Necron just comes back mm -hmm. um, with it. That's why they're like basically mummies. Right. The thing about them, too, is just by shooting or decapitating a Necron doesn't automatically mean that its programming gets transferred to another body. They do have living metal bodies. That Necrodermis will heal, and depending on how bad the damage is, they could heal completely up. Yeah, and that, that's what makes them dangerous. Like, let's say they do end up destroy Because there's actually a story of the orcs versus the Necrons, and, the, and they were fighting on, like, a beach. And the beach ended up... Uh, like the high tide came, so all, all of the Necron bodies were swept back into sea, and that's where the tomb world was. That gave them enough time to regenerate, and they all came back. So it's like a, a, a go again for the orcs, where the orcs couldn't do that, and then they eventually lost. Um, but yeah, so that's how they regenerate. Fixing and reserves. Right. The other thing, too, is you got to remember that within the tomb worlds, there are thousands of constructs, canoptic constructs, like wraiths, tomb spiders, scarabs, that are also repairing and maintaining the tomb world operational. So when the Necrons do suffer like huge losses, it's never like they're out of the they're out of the fight. Right, yeah. They are indeed a marvel of technology. Mm -hmm. This <clears throat> next question comes from Roman One An, hero. Uh, if you could eat an orc, what do you think it would taste like? A Portillo's burger? <laughs> I mean, I guess it depends on the cook, right? Yeah. I've talked about this before. There's a thing called the squig pie. So you, there's a substance that germinates kind of like wheat um, within the orc um, body. So that creates your bread. Um, and then lettuce, because it's just the skin of the, the orc. And then the meat, because orcs are made of meat, or part of them is made of meat. And then you have like the tomato, onions, all that kind of stuff. Those are the organs, we could say. And then <laughs> there's another bun, and that's your, your burger. Mm -hmm. And it tastes like portillo. Yeah, if you want sesame seeds, just get some orc teeth and grind them up. Yep, sprinkle it on. Mm -hmm. It's all elementary, Watson. They should come up, like if you guys are good at programming or whatever... <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys should uh, create a cryptocurrency called Tief, Uh and then we could only use it for trading uh, 40k or like miniatures and stuff like that. And since eBay is being like weird now because of their whole little new yeah, um, they're like payment stuff. Yeah, it's going directly to like bank accounts or something. I don't know. We the 40k <laughs> community can trade in Tief create our own cryptocurrency, other people buy in, we're early investors, so TIF value goes up, and we become rich and buy all the armies. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Forget Safe Moon. I'm not plugging that on purpose. <laughs> I'll start saying something else. <laughs> Next question. This one's by Dead Beats. Oh, you eat beats. Mm -hmm. Beats by Dre. If a Chaos God put all of their efforts into entering real space, what would be the outcome? Hmm. Wait, what? So if a Chaos God like put all his power into crossing the Immaterium and entering real space, could they? And how would that affect real space? 
so far I've actually done a 40 facts video on two of the chaos gods coming into real space. The first is Korn, and then the second one is, I want to say Nurgle. I thought it was like Don Julio. Don Julio, yeah. The cool thing is that there are brief tales of like the actual physical um, chaos god Korn getting up from his throne and attacking probably Slaanesh. Um, and he used his sword, and when he actually, like, struck down, it created a giant canyon within the Immaterium that still exists to this day. So it basically tore the fabric of the Immaterium. That's how powerful he was. Mm -hmm. So I'm only guessing that if the f physical embodiment of Korn came out into real space, like, he could probably create the Great Rift with just a swing of his, his sword. Mm -hmm. And you got to take it into account because um, Korn himself actually like backhanded. What was the name of that bloodthirster? Kabanda? That's what I was thinking, but I'm not 100% sure. There's a bloodthirster, bloodthirster that is like so powerful. He went head, you know, head to head against Sanguinius, a Primarch. And just keep this in mind that, that they're somewhat on an equal playing field. But Korn backhanded him, not even like given two thoughts about it, and it sent him flying for like a week in the warp, where cool. time doesn't exist. <laughs> so that's why when you see the model, like his wings are all tore up because of that. Yeah. So just keep that in mind that like a single swat can create enough force propulsion to push across a giant monster for a week. Yeah. That's crazy. And then when it comes to Nurgle, I always think of, like, that planet that's basically a man in, a f in, the, in the fetal, fetal position. position. I feel like that's what Nurgle would look like if he came into real space. It'll be the size of an entire system, but it'll just be, like, a giant, like, disgusting, naked man. Yeah. Next question. Uh, this one is by Bob J. What kind of weapons do orcs make when they're done fighting the Tyranids? Are they bioweapons? Yep. So what they do is obviously they just get like the claws and the fangs and whatnot and make uh, choppers from them. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is that they have toxin sacks that they take away from who has them? Gene stealers, I think, have them, right? Yeah, for the most part, I think they're just upgrades for like the big guys, so, like gene stealers, carnifexes, uh, swarm lords, that kind of thing. Yeah, so they take that stuff and then they use that as like ammo or fuel to power their weapons. Mm -hmm. So they'll create a shooter. But instead of sh shooting, like, bolts and stuff, it shoots out acid. So I guess it would be a flamer, really. Yeah. But, yeah. And then we, there's been, like, awesome conversions of, like, orcs riding Tyranids or, like, somewhat, I wouldn't say domesticating them, but, like, farming them and using, like, their keratin as, like, shields and that kind of stuff. Yep. This next question comes from Oscar Dighton. What if Kanye was in 40k? Uh, he would definitely be like one of the annoying High Lords of Terra who like did something great, probably during the Age of Apostasy, uh, created like awesome content in terms of music, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> uh, and now he's just annoying. Now it's just like, oh, well, what's he going to say? Yeah. Even though there's definitely mental issues there. But it's 40k. Who doesn't have mental issues? Right. Oh, uh, this one is by the big one. If you had all the powers of Superman, would you use your x-ray vision to spy on your baby mama and make sure she wasn't messing around with your friends? No, if you have x-ray vision, like, there's way better things to look at than your baby mama. Mm -hmm. Like, go to a freaking poker competition, like, easy. Easy. Not just that, but you have all the powers of Superman. I think x-ray vision, for me at least, would kind of be on the lower end. I'd mostly be, like, flying and, like, turning back time by flying around the world, apparently. Yeah, and I would invest into safe mode. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is cool. Mm -hmm. But just imagine how scary that would be to know there is a person in this world that is basically invulnerable. Like, yeah, that's too much power. And there's no kryptonite on this world, so. Mm -hmm. Maybe there, there'll be a crypt tomorrow after... You know, Superman destroys all humans. Right, The yeah. world is the biggest crypt. <laughs> but it'll be safe on the moon. Safe, safe moon. moon. Boom, boom, boom. And then last question. Uh, this one is by 
Brian B. There has been mentions of a deep warp. What do you believe is in it? Uh, Bridget B. Mm -hmm. I, I I was under the assumption that it is... Um, you said the ash waste. Yeah. yeah. Which is just like where fa uh, fairies... Uh, <laughs> furies are... Um, Vampires, the narwhals, uh, psych Nguyen, yeah. um dogs, chaos dogs, what are those called? Oh yeah, I forget what they're called. But yeah, chaos dogs. <laughs> yeah. Um, Basically, all of the warp entities that are just entities, they're not powerful enough to be like gods, mm -hmm. um, but they do have some type of presence within the immaterial. Yeah. Which is crazy to think that there are still places in the warp that the chaos gods haven't touched or claim as their own. Yep. Because the warp is infinite, but not really. Mm -hmm. And chaos gods are supposed to be omniscient, but not really. Just like our real god. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. Those were the questions for today. If you guys have more questions for us, please comment down below. Put question in front of your question. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Yeah. As always, keep those questions coming. This has been The Sound Alchemist. Gersh 1. And we are out. <laughs>